I've let you in on my secret of taking good action shots, and that's to know my subject and always have my camera ready. One of the secrets of getting great pictures is to always post-process your work. I certainly could see a huge difference in the photos that you worked on for the last assignment between your original shots and the ones that you post-processed. I hope you got kind of excited about that and want to continue to learn some post-processing techniques. Today I'm going to let you in on my secret for most of my landscape shots. And that is that I post-process using a technique called high dynamic range photography. High dynamic range photography takes three shots. One that's underexposed, one that's overexposed, and one that's the correct exposure. And then combines those shots in order to increase the tonal range of your photograph. Even modern cameras have their limitations, and the eye can see many more details than the camera is able to capture. Have you ever looked at a photograph taken on a sunny day and noticed that you don't see any of the details in the shadows? Well, if you were present at that scene, your eyes would be able to adjust and see details in both the shadows and the highlights. Unfortunately, our camera can't capture that with just one shot, but there's a fix. We can use software now to combine three different shots and give you a wider tonal range in one photograph that's closer to what your eyes could actually see. Today I'm going to show you how to process a, a photograph using Photoshop's HDR Pro. And then in subsequent videos we'll go on and look at further post-processing that I do to improve that photo after I've processed it in HDR Pro. And you'll learn some new techniques in Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw that we haven't covered before. Are you ready to start processing your photos in HDR to make them really pop? Well, if you're going to use Photoshop's HDR processing, the easiest way to access it is through Bridge. Now, I've actually put the photos that I've posted on eCollege in a collection here, but you're going to need to find them on your computer after you've downloaded them from eCollege. If you can't find them through favorites, you can always go over to your folders and you can access your files just like you would normally on your computer. So I've got a file called class under my pictures and I'm just going to look for that. I can add it to my favorites if I want while I'm working on it and I'm going to open that. Okay, so here are the three pictures that I've given you to work with. One is the correct exposure, one is overexposed by two stops, and the other one is underexposed by two stops. To open them in HDR Pro, you just select all three of the photos, go up to Tools, Photoshop, and merge to HDR Pro. Now this is going to take a couple of minutes and I will pause the computer so don't think that yours should work faster. You'll get to an intermediary step first as it loads all three photos and then it'll bring it up in HCR Pro. It'll bring it up under this default treatment the starting point with any HDR program is usually to just go through and look at how your photo looks using the different stock treatments. City Twilight probably won't work for this. As you can imagine, it's done for an evening shot. And yeah, it kind of washes it out, takes the color out of it. So some of my favorite settings under this are the photorealistic. That's a pretty nice setting because it doesn't really look like an overdone HDR image that you can sometimes get. But it makes gives but it gives your photo a little more depth in the highlights and in the shadows. More saturated can sometimes be good for a picture like this, but you see that is a bit overdone. Now we can tweak this once we've settled on a, a treatment. So I could dial back the saturation in this and some of the other 
tools, like the radius, dial it back a bit and make it look very different. But I don't think I want that one as my starting point. The monochromatic settings give you a black and white look. Sometimes I've really liked some of those settings for snow pictures, or you can see this kind of gives you the idea of an old photo. Often my favorite setting in Photoshop is this Scott 5 setting. I do like the way this is looking. I think it's a touch overdone, and I'm gonna dial some of the settings back a bit. The first thing I sometimes do is look and see what happens if I click on this edge smoothness. And I do like the way that looks better. Often I'll dial the radius back on my edge glow. I don't like to have too much edge glow in my pictures. Makes them look a bit unrealistic. We're just looking for something that looks pleasing to us. It's very much like the settings you were fooling with in Adobe Photoshop and camera raw to make your photo look a little better in post-processing. There's not really a science to it. You're the artist. It's what looks good to you. And what I'm looking at here is I'm trying to get that muddy look out of here by fooling with some of this stuff. And dialing the gamma back seems to be helping me a little bit with that. See if I put the gamma way over there. Let's see what happens. But if I take it all the way out, it gives it almost a Halloween look, which might be appropriate for now. Now, when you're doing this, you do not have to do exactly the same thing as I do. You can choose different settings and make this photo your own, or you can post-process your own set of photos using HCR. Details is usually overdone in the Scott 5, and that's always something I want to dial back, and you see I'm getting a little better sky by doing that see how much I want to dial it back. Doing that I'm definitely getting my sky cleaned up a little bit, but I lose some of the impact. But I tend to like my photos to look a touch realer when I do the HDR. I'm going to bring my shadows up a bit because I think I'm losing some detail in there. Although some of this picture could use a little more saturation, I think I'm getting too much saturation in comparison over in the fall autumn leaves section. Now I want them to pop, but maybe at this point I'm going to leave my vibrance. I want to dial the saturation back just a touch. Now I can fool with my exposure and stuff like that later. I'm kind of liking the way this picture looks about here, but it's just a start. I hardly ever just leave my photos after I've done my HCR processing. I'll then bring them back into Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Photoshop to put some finishing touches on them. So I'm going to hit OK. And it'll bring it back into Photoshop. And you'll see it's merging the three pictures, so it takes a little bit of time. I'm going to put the hand tool on and fill my screen so I can get a better look at it. I actually prefer doing my first set of post processes in Camera Raw or, or Lightroom. All you Lightroom users, Camera Raw and Lightroom really aren't all that different. So I'm going to save this file as a TIFF because Camera Raw won't open PSD files. And we'll call this HDR for class. And I'm changing it to a TIFF rather than a JPEG because this is an intermediate photo. And JPEGs are lossy, meaning that every time you work on them and close them and open them again, they do lose some information. Whereas TIFFs are a lossless format. And hopefully this is going to be a picture suitable for printing. And, and I don't want to lose any quality on it. So I'm just going to sit, hit save now. I set these up with no compression. Again, you'll, you may lose quality if you compress. I have a PC and I leave the pixel order as interleaved. Hit OK. And now I'm going to close Photoshop out because I'm working on a laptop and 
things just go faster if I don't have too much stuff open at once. So now we have our photo back in our file. And if you saved it somewhere where it's not readily available, when you come back to Bridge, you're going to have to go and find your new file. So let's take a look at it first in full screen and compare it to the properly exposed picture. And actually, I could work a lot with that properly exposed picture and, and bring out some details and color. But you can see that the HDR shot is definitely richer and just has a little bit more oomph to it.